All right, hello and welcome everybody to this Star Trails edit along with me video and just showing you how to get color in your Star Trails. So this is gonna be just the editing of the Star Trails and I'm not gonna do a video on the shooting, although I will say a few things for your shooting that will help you get more color in your Star Trails. Number one is shoot way underexposed so the stars retain their color. Number two is a lot of people are saying you have to shoot all night for Star Trails, and if you're just beginning, I would really recommend doing one to two hours. For the thumbnail of this video, for example, and what I'll show you at the end, I did about two hours, and I didn't even incorporate all the pictures I shot because clouds came in, and I think it turned out great. The third thing is never ever have more than one to two seconds in between each shot. My camera was broken, so I had to control my camera with my phone. And so my minimum buffer in between each shot was five seconds. And as you can see, as you will see later in the video, that leaves a teeny, teeny little bit of gap in between your star trails, which isn't a big deal, but if you wanna blow up the photo to be huge, it is a big deal. So no more than one to two seconds in between each 30 second exposure. And that's about it. Those are all the tips I have for shooting. So let's get into it. Right here, we have my first shot, which is my foreground shot. And we can see here, it is only, since I was in a pretty light polluted area, one minute at F2.8 at ISO 3200. And that seemed to work fine for me. I shot all of these a little overexposed. So it, they're at 25 seconds, F2.8, ISO 3200. I would recommend not having any longer exposure longer exposure than 30 seconds. If you're gonna have each shot be over 30 seconds, like one minute, for example, you're gonna get a really hot sensor and you're gonna build up uh, a lot of grain in your photos. Since I did shoot a bit overexposed here, I went ahead and edited these to make the colors pop a little bit more. If you shot more underexposed, you really don't need to do this. And contrary to most other YouTube videos I've seen on Star Trails out there, what I chose to do is bring the saturation way up and the vibrance up a little bit before I exported them. So I did contrast up, highlights down, shadows down, and blacks down, and then just pushed that saturation way up there. And then I just double click, develops, go to develop settings, copy settings, and pasted them for all of my Star Trails photos. What I find for editing them beforehand works a lot better with bringing out the colors is because when you export these, even if you export them as TIFF files, so what I use, Starstacks, still exports it as a JPEG. And even if you type .tiff when you export it, I don't know why, but I I really don't think it retains the data. It is as much data as a TIFF because the file size is like not even a megabyte. That's why I feel like it's better to do the bulk of your editing beforehand. So if you're following along, bring up your saturation, bring up your vibrance. We're gonna take care of this light pollution and uh, like warmth later in the video, which you may have as well if you're shooting near a city. Lastly, before we move to our next step, we are going to flip through our photos here. And for example, we have what might be a shooting star, but there'll be a bunch of planes in your shots. There'll be shooting stars. There'll be, there could even be rockets, whatever. So you're gonna want to, right now in this stage, some people like to remove them at the end, but I like to do it beforehand, is just remove all of that stuff. I'm not gonna do it for the sake of time for this tutorial, but you're just gonna go to your band-aid thing here and just go like that. Whoop and then boom, it's gone. Okay, so once you've done all your edits, you go to library and you can select all of your pictures by hitting shift and then right click and export, export again. And what a lot of people say to do is export them as TIFFs. I really just think you should do the editing beforehand and export them as JPEGs. So for now, just export them as JPEGs and put them in some kind of folder. Okay, so we have exported all of our photos to a specific folder. So now what we're gonna do, as, as well as our foreground picture, but you do not wanna include your foreground picture in the Starstacks software. Go to your images and hit Command or Control A. Then the software I'm gonna use is Starstacks. We're gonna open up Starstacks and just drag them all into here. Once they're in star stacks, you have a few options here. Light in, gap filling, dark in, blah, 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 blah. The best one to do is gap filling. And I personally really like comet mode. So for this video, I'm gonna do that. And then 
I like to drag the trails to like about here so that I can get the longest trails possible. And if you're shooting for an hour to two hours, comet mode I think makes your photo look a lot better because it looks like a ton of little tiny comets in the sky rather than just smallish lines. So if you're out there for a shorter period of time, I think comet mode really makes the image look a lot better. Once we're on gap filling, and you've chosen to do comment mode or no comment mode, all you're gonna do is click right here with these three things. That is the stack and just tap that. Now it is slowly gonna start stacking up all of our images here. And so I'm gonna fast forward till that's done. Okay, and our stacking is done. So here's where a super important part of the video comes in with star stacks. We have our threshold and we have our amount. Our threshold is the area of the image that is going to be selected. And the amount is the aggressiveness at which the gap filling is going to take place. So you may be tempted to just look really quick, bring that threshold down, bring that gap filling up and your stars are gonna pop a ton and it's gonna look really good. You know, if you find that sweet spot, it's gonna automatically look really nice, but you really cannot do this. What you need to do is take your threshold and really quick, your threshold, the low, so having a low threshold that it means the lowest point of the threshold is the blacks and the highest point of the threshold is complete white. So if you're at a low threshold, it's gonna select from that point, so a darker area of the image, and it's gonna select all the way up brightness from there. So low threshold, you can see it's almost the whole image is selected, and all the way down the entire image, even the blacks down here is selected. Whereas a high threshold, hardly anything is selected except the stars. It's really important that we don't have a big green splotch in our image, even if it looks better right now, for example, like this, or even a higher threshold where our splotch is just right here on the clouds, we have to have absolutely no splotching except for the stars. So as you can see when it's really high right here, only our stars are selected. And that is because if we export it where it looks good immediately, like right here, we're gonna end up with a picture like this. And this is where that green splotch was right in this corner here to the left you can see there's a ton of grain in there and it's just gonna be a nightmare to edit in Photoshop. Not to mention that all of your white points are completely blown out so we really can't bring any of the color into there. So let me be clear, what we need to do is have a high enough threshold so that there is no splotching at all of that green. So none of this. And I find that that is almost as high as you can go right about here. And then our amount, we can just bring up, bring way up. And then when you've done that, you can export your image by clicking uh, the little save button right here. Now what we're gonna do is click on our image that we just exported, go to open with and Adobe Photoshop 2023. Next, we're gonna do the same thing for our foreground image. So we got our foreground image. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate that layer. We're going to hold command or control and then click on right here on the image in our layers. Once we have that selected, we're gonna click command C and then command V right here. So now we have both of our layers exactly lined up. We're gonna duplicate our background layer and then drag our foreground layer underneath our background layer. So how do we get these blended together? There are many ways to do this, but the way that I think is the fastest and the best way, at least for my scenario, where I have a tree right here that has a bunch of little intricate areas. Yeah, you can go in with a brush and take hours and get it all perfect, but I think the best way to do it is click on your foreground layer, go over to edit, go down to sky replacement, doesn't matter what is in here. You're just gonna click on sky replacement and click okay. So all we wanna get from this is our new mask. And we're gonna put that guy right onto our background layer just by grabbing, dra dragging and dropping. And now we are going to make our picture here invisible. Boom, oh, boom. Yeah, 
So we can actually just delete this whole thing right here, sky replacement and delete group, group and contents. Okay, so now we have our background layer, our foreground layer, our layer mask, and we have all the pieces we need to make this a cool picture. Obviously it looks kind of fake right now. So first things first, we're going to want to make our background layer pop and look nice, beautiful, and colorful. So best way to do that is to go to filter and camera raw filter. Once we are in our camera raw filter, we can pretty much do whatever we would do in Lightroom on this guy, obviously with a little bit of limitations because we're working with a JPEG. So basically what we're gonna do in here is just try and get these stars to pop. And what I generally do is pull down those blacks, pull up those, oops, Pull up those whites, beautiful. Bring down those shadows a bit, bring up that contrast, maybe even bring up the exposure of hair. Go to our saturation, crank that puppy up a little bit, bring our clarity up, and bring our exposure back down actually. Might be a little over edited, but it's looking good. Might actually try bringing our clarity down. Yeah, I actually like the smoothness of dragging the clarity slider down a little bit. So you have a bunch of light pollution, let's say, as I do, in one part of your image. So how are we gonna fix that? Since it's kind of coming in like as a little circular angle here, we're just gonna go to our gradients, slap on a radial gradient right here, turn our Feather up all the way, great, already is. And just bring our temperature down a wee bit, not too much, but I'd say about there. And it's a bit softer there, so we're going to bring up the contrast a little bit, maybe bring down the exposure of hair, bring down the blacks a bit, kind of trying to make it more like the right side of our image bring up those whites too. So that's looking pretty good. Next we have all this ugliness in the bottom and obviously it's way too black. Blending is gonna be terrible because our image is going to just not look real as we saw before. So we're going to make a new mask and this time we're gonna do a linear gradient and where it's all warm and ugly right here and just blah, gross, just right here, a nice little linear gradient. And surprisingly, I'm gonna turn our exposure up a little bit. I'm also going to take uh, the temperature down quite a bit. So had we done this step with the other image that looked really good immediately out of star stacks, we would not have been able to do to mess around with any of this cloud because it would have just been permanently fucked. So I'm going to turn the shadows up, turn the highlights down just a tad. So lastly, what we're going to add to our image here is a little radial gradient in the middle, kind of just to drag our eye here. And we're gonna turn up the exposure a bit. And yeah, just like that. And then we're gonna hit okay. So already it's blending quite a bit better since we brought the exposure up behind the tree right here. There is a little bit of an issue over in the right hand corner but we can fix that by editing our foreground. So with our foreground, same thing, we're gonna go to filter, camera raw filter. Just bring that exposure down a hair. And maybe do a little radial gradient, just kind of like right here, like a little light leading up to the tree. Just super subtle. And then Bring the contrast up, texture up a bit, clarity up a bit, whites up a bit, and 
Yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna bring the exposure down just a tad bit more. Okay, temperature's good. Okay. So let's see how this is looking. Great, so already quite a bit better. So one other thing I forgot to mention here, which can make your photos look a lot more colorful is in the camera raw filter. Again, what I actually like to do a lot is bring up the tint. Bring up the tint and then maybe the temperature along with the tint. And it kind of gives you like a more reddish, I don't know, more colorful, cool picture. So if you want to do that, go for it. If your picture's already looking good, then no worries. So that's going to be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a little bit confusing, but I'm not super used to making tutorial videos. I've had a lot of problems with star stacks and really understanding how it works, as well as doing star trails. So those were my tips and tricks to just have the most quick streamlined process to making your star trails nice and colorful because most of my star trails were looking very, very blue or just one colored and it was mostly because I was shooting overexposed and because I never brought up the saturation and vibrance beforehand. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.